Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hello, my name is Nia, and this is my name sign. I was born deaf. My family, both of my parents are deaf. So I'm the second generation of deaf family member. I remember when I was a kid, I noticed someone who's very confidently in front of many people at the stage. And that inspires me a lot. And I told myself that I want to be like that person one day. However, I found difficulties in many situations like signing up for public schools, choosing major in university, since my relatives told me that I cannot take the major that I want. Once I got an offer for an exchange program abroad, but my relatives said that I cannot do that just because I'm deaf and because they think I cannot communicate with hearing people in spoken language. Since 2012, I joined a community named Leonard Cheshire Disability Young Voice Indonesia. This is a youth cross-disability community and its main objective is to for disability rights. Being involved in this community, I learned a lot of things. Before, disability in the past didn't have contact one with another because they were just for their disability like sensory, mental, or physical disability. By joining this community, I realized how to give assistance properly. While me as a deaf person, I guide my blind friend in, in opposite they, he or she become my ears and my mouth. Another thing that I learned is about the right techniques. So I make positive benefits from this to make positive impacts through social media. After all those experience, I gradually realize who I am, my identity as a deaf person. I'm proud of my language and language, and I see sign language interpreter as an access for me to share my thoughts and broaden my movements to make collaboration with other youth communities. Ironically, parents who have children with disabilities tend to show their overprotective attitude. Regarding deaf children, they are not involved in family conversation. We talk about education. The curricula in special schools is far left behind compared to public schools, and it affects the literacy of deaf people, and also it affects their competency in language. If you talk about university, there are numbers of dreams that deaf people can take, but limit, like cooking, hotel management, or IT. Question is, how if deaf students want to learn about other subjects? Even after they graduated, they found themselves difficult to find a suitable job. Many inclusive universities or schools are not at the same page about the term of inclusion. Being inclusive is not just allowing students to study in your institution, but that means being inclusion, being inclusive means like you give, we give the adequate accommodation for them. Furthermore, in daily life, many information delivered orally, less visually. So it's a challenge for deaf people. In 2016, I joined two international programs. The first one is the American Indonesian Deaf Youth Leadership Program. It's a culture exchange and human rights program. In June, the Indonesian delegate flew to Washington DC, including me. We learned deeper about American with Disabilities Act, ADA, and its impact at the legal basis to help and support disability people there. Then we 
went to New York, and we had a great opportunity to visit the headquarters of United Nations. It was an amazing experience. We had certain meetings, and they have discussion about disability. We witnessed that the disability politicians were involved in a high meeting. They discussed about the progress in implementing disability rights in each participating country. Besides the Indonesian delegates, there were U.S. delegates who come from various backgrounds, such as professors, lawyers, doctors. The former President Barack Obama's receptionist, the analyst of USAID, and also the certified of deaf sign language interpreter. In the same year, in September, I flew to London. I attend unlimited festival disability arts. There are a lot of disability artists shown their creative art, piece of creative arts, like musical performance, dance performance, musical performance, comedy, as well as visual arts. Those arts are featured to create a positive perspective towards people with disability. Let us imagine if a locket for ticketing, exhibition, or theater building, even restroom, can get accessed by everyone, including persons with disability. Let me take you to example if there is an uh, exhibition of a three-dimensional statue, why people still can enjoy by patch tours or by listening to the audio description through headphone. Or probably the deaf people can enjoy the atmosphere by the existence of sign language interpreter or the sign to text transcription. If we talk about the wheelchair user, ramp, elevator, escalator should be adjusted, or for example, a locket for ticketing should be, can be adjusted uh, so it's adjusted to the height of the wheelchair user. For having those accommodations and facilitations, so people will be more aware about the existence of disability, including the unseen disability people. But being disability is normal. If we talk about the unseen disability, there were bipolar or people with attention deficit hyperactive disorder and autistic. This really inspires me a lot. And I would like to socialize about this and advocate about this, especially disability issues here in Indonesia. Is accessibility merely for disability people? That tickles me. Let me drag you to example. If you watch a movie with Javanese there, so we know that not all people familiar with Javanese, right? So they need subtitle in Indonesian. So they can get the emotion of the movie. So they can get the value also from the movie. Another example is if a person needs a crutch or crutches after an accident, or probably elderly people, they tend to walk slowly. They want to go to somewhere faster, so they need escalator or elevator or other facilities so can they move faster than before. Or probably another situation, a non-sign hearing person would like to ask questions to a group of signing deaf people. How can he ask the question? So we can see who is the person who is disabled now. That person is. So accessibility should be fair, not only equal. And accessibility should be prepared, start from now. Just like Indonesian proverb, sedia payung sebelum hujan. That reminds me, that reminds us as well, that we need to be prepared, because we don't know, we never know what will happen in the future. 
why do we need to fight for accessibility? We know that infrastructures are getting better nowadays. However, those are not safety and comfortable still. For example, guiding blocks for the blind people are still cut off. The slope of the ramp is too high, so the wheelchair user needs assistance from others. The information mainly delivered in spoken language, but less visual, so it's challenged for deaf people. So this problem occurs because those people, persons with disability, were not involved at the first place, but they're involved after all, everything is almost done. We can imagine it would be costly if we want to ask for renovation. Indonesia has a national law, number 8, 2016. It states that the person with disability have fully right for adjustment, modification for the facilities. And those accessibility should be made for us, all of us. Now, at present, Indonesia has Jakarta Barrier Free Tourism, GBFT. It involves representatives from government, from the tour attraction side, and public transportation side. They jump to the road and see the exact situation and have discussion about what can they do for a better facility. If you look at British Council, they've been very being supportive in making programs related to disability and arts, just like what they did in London for Unlimited Festival Disability Arts. They had that the same thing here in Indonesia. The third one is Connect. Indonesia Inclusive. It's a research network that always sound disability issues to people, to the society. Here, I'm talking with you in TEDx. I'm talking with you with sign language. I get the access. So disability is not about the lack function of our physics, but the environment limit our potential. We have homeworks here. A lot of things we have to do. Be committed. We never know. We will get old, and we never know when we will be disabled one day. So what are you waiting for? Commitment and determination as factors for us to work together. Is this only one group business? No, this is our responsibility. So let's work on this together for inclusive Indonesia. Thank you. Oh, wait. I have something. I have a sign for you. We notice one word, A-W-A-K-A. -A -A. It's awake. This is the sign. Can you follow me to sign this? Awake. Awake. Yes, please be awake about disabilities. Hey, wait, what I do? What I'm doing? Oh, you just made applause, right? But I cannot hear the sound. So for deaf people, the applause is like this. So let's applause together. Thank you. <laughs> 